What's up, everybody? JTW of Team X Trades here with the first in a series of educational videos that are a crash course I've developed based on my experiences doing one on one mentoring with new traders. A couple of quick housekeeping items make sure to hit that like button below. Also, make sure to turn on notifications and subscribe to our YouTube channel here to catch updates on all the latest educational content for traders like you. Also, a quick disclaimer that the contents of this video are not intended to be financial advice and I am not a certified financial advisor. You are 100% responsible for the investment decisions you make. The following is purely my opinion that I am sharing for educational purposes. So with that, let's get started. So when I say risk management to folks, uh, typically the first thing that comes to mind is position sizing. So I think it's best that we start by laying some uh, framework for what our max position size should be based on how large our account is. So if we're talking about an account uh, that's trading with $5,000 or less, uh, generally speaking, I would recommend a 10% max position size. So if we're using the example of a $2,000 account, that allows us essentially $200 per trade. For accounts that are uh, on the $5,000 and up size, uh, I recommend uh, 5%. As a general rule of thumb, uh, if we're using a $5,000, so the bare minimum account size to use that max uh, pos position percentage, 5% uh, of that $5,000 account gives us about $250 per trade. Obviously, you can continue to scale uh, the present position size down depending on uh, if you have a larger and larger account. So if you have a $100,000 account, you could easily scale that down to a 1% position size and still be afforded a decent dollar amount uh, to execute your trade plans with. When we're talking about these uh, max position sizes, these are not to exceed uh, percentages for any one trade on any one ticker with a directional bias. So what I mean when I say that is if you're putting the max position size into long-term Apple calls, uh, so let's say 10% of a $2,000 account in Apple calls, giving yourself some time, and uh, you see that Apple may be uh, making a downside move for a short period and you want to not be totally exposed to the losses you might incur during that uh, downtrend, you might open some short-term Apple puts with, let's, with, let's say, uh, 5% of your available buying power. So overall, you've got 15% uh, tied up in Apple, but because it's not all tied up uh, in a directional bias, it's not more than 10% saying it's going to be a bullish scenario for Apple, uh, you are staying within the bounds uh, of these uh, guidelines I am providing for position sizing. One of the more common mistakes I see newer traders making is that they want to use what they are going to stop out at as far as uh, loss on the trade as their exposure limit instead of using the uh, total amount to open the position uh, as the factor that they're using to determine what their position size is. So instead of using our prior example with the $2,000 account, using a $200 max position size, they will use a $200 loss as a means to still achieve that uh, overall maximum risk exposure on the trade, but the actual cost of entering the trade is much greater than $200. So to run that through a little bit further, uh, just using these examples that I've spelled out here, uh, so if we use a $200 contract purchase, so that's 10% of that $2,000 account, and let's say our trade plan gets invalidated and we wind up stopping out at a 30% loss on those contracts, that turns into a $60 loss or ultimately 3% of the account uh, where that was standing when we opened the trade. Now, if we keep our uh, losses to essentially that type of scenario, and let's say it's a worst case a situation and we take nothing but losses um, before we ultimately run that account down to zero. If we're only taking a 3% loss per trade, that results in allowing us to take in total 33 trades. However, if I go back to that scenario where uh, we're using the 10% uh, being 10% of the account being where we are actually stopping out and not limiting the buy to open amount to 10% of the account. Well, now we're down to only 10 trades uh, if we take nothing but losses starting out as a new trader. It's important, especially for newer traders, that you have as many opportunities 
to learn and develop and get better as a trader early on without knocking yourself out of the game too quickly. Obviously, it's going to be very easy to blow an account if you only have 10 trades to make starting out versus being able to have three times as many trades if you're being smart about your actual position sizing. So next, I want to talk a little bit about contract selection. This is another uh, area where I see newer traders making a lot of mistakes. And typically those mistakes are either they're going way too far out of the money with their strike selection or they are buying contracts with very little time on them for the trade to work out. So some general rules uh, that I personally have in place uh, for newer traders that I work with. Contracts should have at least three and a half trading days on them uh, early on into learning how to trade. Obviously more time is better. I've never had anybody reach out to me and say, hey man, these option contracts are doing really well, but they've got way too much time left on them. Also important uh, in the contract selection process is picking the right strikes. Strikes should generally be no more than two to three strikes out of the money depending on the contract expiration. So if we take a look at this Tesla example to the left, you can see that if I give myself five trading days, which would be this coming Friday's expiration on December the 2nd, and I look at my strikes as being uh, 185 being my at the money strike because Tesla is currently trading at 182.86. My 187.5 strike being one strike out of the money, 190 being two strikes out of the money, and 192.5 being three strikes out of the money. If I'm giving myself five days, which is pretty close to the bare minimum of time on a trade, and let's say I want to go two strikes out of the money, so I want to take the 190 strike. It's going to cost me at least $325 to get into that trade. So if I'm working with a $2,000 account, I've got a 10% max buy to open position size. I obviously cannot afford $325 a contract and still respect my rules for position sizing. So what this ultimately means is that it may take time to earn the ability to trade some tickers, especially those that have high volatility and more expensive options contracts. Starting out, I definitely recommend finding tickers uh, that aren't overly volatile and don't have very inflated options contract prices while you're getting your strategy and your system uh, in place. But eventually, you'll grow as a trader and your account will grow, and eventually, that $325 per option contract, once you've hit, let's say, a $10,000 account size and you're using a 5% position size, which allows you $500 for the trade, well, now that $325 is very affordable. So again, that's what I mean when I say it may take some time to earn the ability to trade some tickers. So now let's talk a little bit about proper risk-reward and trade planning. Trade planning is something I will cover in depth in a separate video. But for now, let's talk about our risk to reward setups. So if we use this uh, Tesla trade plan uh, that I developed for uh, our members at Xtrades during one of our morning podcasts, where we were looking to take puts on Tesla, and uh, the plan in this particular uh, scenario was to take puts below or on a break of 215.42 support. We then had price targets at 210.36, 201.14, and 192.10 being our third and final price target to the downside. We had a stop loss average down level at 219.23. Whether we are shorting shares or playing options in this particular scenario, in either case, we want to make sure that we have the proper risk reward with regards to the uh, distance of the move on the underlying asset between our entry and our first price target and the distance between our entry and our stop loss level. As you can see in this particular case, our risk to reward ratio uh, for us to hit PT1 uh, with our stop loss at 219.23 was a 1.36 risk to reward. As you are developing uh, your trade plans based on the chart and the uh, price action of a particular ticker, you may find yourself uh, spotting scenarios where your risk to reward is much greater uh, than one to one, in some cases uh, two to one or even three to one. Three to one setups, I would consider those A plus setups. Two to one setups are still A setups, that's still pretty good. 
Uh, one-to-one setups should be considered sort of B setups. They, they meet the bare minimum requirements uh, for us to want to get into a trade. Uh, but obviously, we want to have more than just the bare minimum before we throw money into the market. For newer traders, uh, you will want to focus strictly on A-plus setups where uh, your risk to reward by the time you hit your first price target uh, is 3 to 1. That will allow you to be uh, wrong uh, more frequently but still overall profitable because you'll only need to beat essentially a 33.3% success rate on your trades if you're limiting your risk to reward setups uh, to a 3 to 1 scenario or A plus setups. And early on, you're going to be wrong a lot more than you're going to be right. Now, as you can see, uh, our trade plans typically do have more than one price target, and you can hit PTs 2 and 3. Um, so in this particular case, the overall risk to reward set up on this Tesla trade plan was actually 6.39 to 1 if we got PT3 uh, without stopping out versus what it would have cost us to stop out. But again, we want to really make sure that we're judging our setups based on uh, that PT1 distance from our entry and the stop loss distance from our entry. So if you follow uh, all the guidelines that I provided so far in this video, you should put yourself in a position to trade sustainably for long enough to learn and develop a system that is ultimately profitable for you. Uh, but in closing, I do have a few final tips. First and foremost, focus on education first and find yourself a trading community uh, that allows you to grow and expand as a trader. Obviously, my personal recommendation is Xtrades. Xtrades was instrumental uh, in my development as a trader personally, uh, and I can't say uh, enough about the folks on the team at Xtrades and their abilities to help uh, teach newer traders how to become profitable and trade uh, for a long duration of time. While you're learning, don't be afraid to start off paper trading, especially until you get the mechanics of opening and closing your positions and you get the basics of uh, charting and trade planning down to a science. Next, uh, make sure to adjust your starting position size based on uh, the risk to reward or the type of setup uh, the plan is providing for you, especially uh, for anything less than those A or A plus setups. Make sure that you're always uh, putting some consideration into the possibility of having to uh, average down or uh, potentially average up on a trade that's working in your favor. If you start off with the full 5 or 10% of your account based on your account size as your starting position size, obviously you've left yourself no room uh, to add to that directional bias at that point. And last but not least, lottos are fun, uh, but until you are trading uh, profitably, for a long period of time and you're essentially uh, working with a small fraction of your profits or you know quote unquote house money uh, to put a very small stake into a lotto trade uh, generally speaking and until you've hit that point i recommend avoiding lottos uh, as a rule of thumb so with that i'd like to thank you uh, for your time and for watching this video uh, one final reminder to uh, tap that thumbs up button uh, and subscribe to our youtube channel here for uh, updates on the latest educational videos coming out from the team at Xtrades. Also, one uh, note that there is a link below uh, for a 20-day free trial uh, for anyone interested.